Content that, number one, engages your key target audience and builds and builds and builds and allows you to create a huge community. Number two, I think, and this is equally as important, is it allows you to achieve your ROI goals from your social media marketing, right? So if I'm gathering a huge audience, the presumption is that I'm achieving my goals. If none of those people ever spend a dollar with me, am I achieving my ROI goals and can I continue to hire a big department if there's no money behind it? And the answer for a business is probably not. Now, you know, the premises out there in the world is, is do it, build it, and it will monetize itself. Is that practical? How many people in here have hired two or three people and they don't care if those people generate a dime of money? <laughs> I can't do that, right? So I, I think practically speaking in this group, we have to say, you know, it's got to result in money at some point in time where you can't perpetuate it on an ongoing basis. And so that's how I'll define successful content generation. So number one on this is how do you generate successful content? I've listed out, clearly define the results that you expect to achieve through your social media marketing activities. Are you trying to generate more contacts to communicate with, probably in hopes of generating more business or referral at some point in time. Generating awareness out there for your brand so that when people have a need for your product or service that they're going to say, hey, I know somebody who does that. And the reach and, and the brand awareness that ultimately hopefully translates into some sort of monetary or, or, or brand awareness out there for the business. Is it going to be sales? Is it going to be brand engagement? These people that I have as clients out there. I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they said, we have all the clients we need. We don't need to market out there anymore, but I'm going to say this, in today's world, social media should be used for engaging your current audience and making sure that they understand who you are and making sure they're referring more people. So, so using that as that tool is really important, getting more referrals, etc. So number one, what's the goal? Why are you going to start doing social media marketing aside from, hey, it's 2011 and I just have to? It's not a good reason, even in this group, right? So, you know, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Write it down. It might change. It might shift. I don't know. But you ought to have a purpose in mind or you're not going to know what you need to generate to achieve that goal. Second thing is clearly define what personas you want to influence. And we've talked a little bit about this before. And so what we do at Webolutions, um, Webolutions, we're a full service branding and marketing agency. So the first thing we do with our clients is help them define their brand, help them define their brand experience, help them define what their product and services, help them define who their target audience is, their unique selling propositions, and their overall brand strategy. Before we can do anything, that's important. So for you guys to be able to create relevant content, something that adds value, something that engages me, something that's, that's brief. How do I engage somebody in, in a brief conversation if I don't know who they are? It, it's so much harder to engage people through brevity than it is through a lot of words. And so I need to know exactly who you are and what you want to hear about to have that brief conversation. We have to know each other well. So some of the things that, that we do when we're doing that that I would encourage you guys to do is say, how old is this person? What gender is this person? Where do they work? What is their circumstance? How much money do they make? What are the challenges they face in their day-to-day -day lives? What are, the things that, uh, what are the things that they care about? What would prompt them to care about what I have to say? You guys get so much information coming at you every single day. More, 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 more. Our job has become triaging this information and getting it down to something that I can handle in, in my day. So if you don't understand what would all of a sudden make them care about what you have to say, how can you answer that, right? So um, Kim mentioned that, that you know, hey, uh, help their wallets, you know, help them with their finances and things. So what would prompt them to care about what they have to say? One of them just lost a job. Um, they're, they're, they're low on money. Food costs in the United States were up 29% last year across the board because of more consumption in China and, and, and the weather that we've had. Um, these are all things that would prompt them to care about what you have to say. And so if you understand what happened in their world where they'd want to read the tweet, you're going to find it easier to write that tweet that says, 
here's what's going on and here's how I can help you and this is how it's relevant and do it in the shortest amount of time. So what would prompt them to care about what you have to say? What are the key messages you want to get across to them? What are the questions and concerns they're going to have about your product and your service? What are the key factors they're going to consider when they're making a decision? You know. Um, and so by going through and making the personas, and I would just get out a piece of paper and I would write down, this is the person I'm tweeting to. And I would make two or three of these different personas and I would say, you know what, this is my number one priority, this is number two, this is number three, based on the goals and the objectives I have from entering into the world or continuing to, to spend my resources doing social media marketing, right? So, so if you know the person, you can write to them, okay? Next thing is clearly define your brand experience. Now I know who you are, I know what you want, I know what my goals are. Am I gonna be funny? You know, we mentioned humor. Does everybody want humor in social media marketing? Do you want everything you get to have humor in it? You know what, and, and, and the answer would always be no, because 90% of people aren't really that funny when they're sending things, and so, so you, you don't want a bunch of people trying, you know, um, and, and so it's no good. But, but, you know, maybe my audience does want humor, and maybe that's my brand, is I'm the, I'm the funny financial Main Street, you know, living life guy, right? And then that can be my brand. But when you're going to pick something, say what is going to be the experience that people are going to have with your brand. How is it going to come across? What's the voice that you're going to use? And how are you going to say that consistently so that as people start gathering around you, they're not disappointed that you're jumping all over the place. Okay? So clearly define your brand experience. Then clearly define also the keywords that ought to be in your posts and in your, in your tweets and in your messaging. And I'm not saying to, to load it and make it insincere like Jim mentioned, but I am saying be aware and as, as you're writing that those words are in there so these things are searchable and findable and people can uh, get engaged with you if they choose to, uh, to get involved in these topics. Um, clearly define what on-brand content you're going to provide. Okay, this is probably the biggest decision. I think that everybody believes that they ought to be making, you know, 20 tweets a day. They ought to be writing on the Facebook wall every hour. They ought to be making a video every week. They ought to be posting images. They ought to be checking in all these places. They ought to be, uh, you know, listening to 100,000 conversations. The tool that we use to monitor conversations listens to 300,000 blogs. Okay? Who wants to listen to 300,000 blogs every day, right? And so this is the biggest decision is based on your target audience and based on what you want to achieve, what are the things that you can truly do on a consistent, we've talked about this, consistent basis where people can say, I know who this person is, I like interacting with them, and this is something that I'm going to do as part of my day that I'm dedicating time to, or part of my week that I'm dedicating time to on a consistent basis. That's not easy. How are you guys deciding what you do every day? Do you have an outline? Yeah, that says that. Stan. So part of it for us is we, we want to build this community, this family environment at our martial arts school. Yeah. <laughs> and so, really, a big part of what we're posting on our fan book, uh, our fan page, really has to do more with how do we build that community? How do we show families being involved in martial arts and show the benefits of how martial arts is helping those families and so forth? So that happens in, in photographs. It happens in little posts about how well somebody did last night in class. It's a video, a short little video. You know, we did Parents' Night Out um, a couple of weeks ago, and we did, um, what was it, Extreme Dodgeball. And With so, the parents? No, we sent okay. the parents away. The kids did it. Right. Um, <laughs> no, but we did, we, we did a funny thing, because one of my instructors likes to wear a mohawk. Uh -huh. And so I told him he can't wear it during the week, but he can wear it on Friday night or Saturday classes. Yeah. And all the, so all these little kids come in with mohawks, because he's got a mohawk. So we, we did a little short video, we called it Mohawk Friday. Right. And so we had the little kids that had the Mohawk standing with the instructor with the Mohawk and then all these kids behind them jump up screaming and yelling and put a little video out there behind it. So again, it creates the whole family environment and so forth. So, so let's talk about that real quick. The, the experience of your brand is helping families what? 
they're coming together better, they're, they're raising better children. What would you say you'd define that as? There's, a, there's an old saying in martial arts that says, the family that kicks together sticks together. And so, literally, it really does bring families together. So the experience of your brand would be building stronger families right. through martial arts right. on some level. Right. So I'm going to go back to that. We said define what your experience is. And if that stands experience, I think by knowing that, you have a better idea of what types of things you're supposed to create. If I'm going to create better families, that to me doesn't look like words. That looks like mother and child and husband and wife together and they're, they're all coming together and being together because of their relationship with this martial arts studio, yeah? Correct. Ideally. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, would you say that's on-brand content is what you're talking about? Because I want to know what you mean by on-brand. On-brand, I mean if Stan, if his experience out there in the world is building stronger families building stronger family relationships, ties, all those things through martial arts. He's not saying, I sell Taekwondo, right? Is it? Yeah, Taekwondo, right? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> very good. So Taekwondo, he's saying, I'm building stronger families. Those are two totally different messages out there in the world. Now, it's built around Taekwondo, but that's not the message. So when I say on brand, I mean not focusing on the, on, the on the commodity, the product, the service. This, I'm saying this is the experience you're going to have with my brand and that's what I should put out there to be on brand.